Welcome tech enthusiasts. Today, we're diving into the world of torrent optimization with a step-by-step -step guide on how to configure the best Qubit torrent settings for faster downloads and improved performance. Let's kick things off by launching Qubit torrent. Once you've got the application up and running, we'll navigate to the settings window. This is where the magic happens, allowing us to fine tune our torrent client for optimal performance. Now, you might be tempted to start tweaking things right away, but hold your horses. The behavior section is actually pretty well configured out of the box. We'll be skipping this part and diving straight into the juicy stuff. Let's head over to the download section. This is where we can make some meaningful changes that'll give your torrenting experience a real boost. First up, we've got the add to top of queue option. If you're the type who likes to prioritize your latest downloads, go ahead and enable this. It'll ensure that your newest torrents start downloading right away. Perfect for those must have files. Next on our list is merge trackers to existing torrents. This little gem is a keeper. Enable it as it helps combine trackers and increase peer availability. More peers mean faster downloads. So this is a no brainer for optimizing your speed. Now, let's talk about pre-allocate disk space. This option is a bit of a trade-off. Enabling it ensures that the required disk space for your entire download is reserved up front. This can help prevent fragmentation and improve overall performance, especially when it comes to writing files. However, it might cause slower torrent initialization. If you've got storage to spare and you're after smoother file writing performance, go ahead and turn this on. Last but not least in this section, we've got append QB extension. This nifty little feature helps you differentiate between incomplete and finished downloads. By adding the QB extension to files that are still downloading, you can easily identify which files are ready to go and which ones need more time. It's a simple but effective way to keep your downloads organized. Now that we've optimized our download section, let's dive into the connection settings. This is where we can really fine tune our QBit torrent for speed, privacy, and overall performance. First up, Let's look at the TCP and UTP settings. You'll notice it's already set to use both TCP and UTP, which is actually the sweet spot for performance. TCP is your reliable workhorse, ensuring data integrity, while UTP helps minimize network congestion. Together, they create a perfect balance of speed and network stability. Next, let's talk about the port used for incoming connections. Mine is set to 31883 which is fine. But here's a pro tip. For better privacy and to potentially avoid ISP throttling, consider switching to a port within the range of 50,000 to 60,000. This range is less likely to be monitored or throttled by ISPs. Just remember to steer clear of commonly blocked ports to keep your torrents flowing smoothly. Now, let's look at the use UPnP slash NAT PMP port forwarding from my router option. Keep this enabled. It's like having a personal doorman for your torrents automatically opening the necessary ports on your router. This can significantly improve your connection speed without you having to fumble with manual port forwarding. However, if you're extremely privacy conscious, some users prefer to disable UPnP as it could potentially expose your device to certain vulnerabilities. For most users though, it's generally safe and beneficial to keep it on. Moving on to the global maximum number of connections. By default, it's set to 500, which is a reasonable number for most setups. But if you're blessed with a fast and stable connection, you might want to experiment with increasing this. Try bumping it up to 800 or even 1000. This could potentially boost your download speeds by connecting to more peers. Just be cautious cautious not to set it too high, as it could overload your system or network. The maximum number of connections per torrent is set to 100 by default. This is fine for most users, but if you often download torrents with a large number of peers, consider nudging this up to 150 or 200. This can be particularly helpful for popular torrents with many seeders. Next up is the global maximum number of upload slots, defaulted to 20. This is generally sufficient but you can adjust it based on your connection speed. If you're working with limited upload bandwidth, you might want to lower this to around 10 to 15 to avoid creating bottlenecks in your connection. Similarly, the maximum number of upload slots per torrent is set to four by default. Unless you're sitting on a gold mine of upload bandwidth, it's best to keep this between four to six. If you do have lightning fast upload speeds, feel free to increase it a bit. Now, let's talk about the proxy server settings. If privacy is a major concern for you, consider using a proxy server or VPN to anonymize your traffic. This can be a game changer if you want to avoid ISP throttling or keep your IP address hidden from prying eyes. Lastly, let's look at IP filtering. If you're worried about privacy or security, you might want to use an IP filter to block potentially malicious or unwanted IP addresses. You can download comprehensive IP block lists from reputable sources like iBlockList.com. This extra layer of protection can help keep your torrenting experience safe and smooth. Now that we've fine-tuned our connection settings, 
Let's shift gears and zoom into the speed section. This is where we'll really put the pedal to the metal and optimize our download and upload speeds. Let's start with the global rate limits. By default, both upload and download are set to unlimited. This is generally fine if you want to allow your bandwidth to run free and wild. However, if you're sharing your internet connection, or if you need to ensure smooth browsing while torrenting, you might want to consider setting some limits here. Next up, We've got the alternative rate limits. These are typically used to reduce bandwidth consumption during specific times, like when you're working from home or during peak household internet usage. The default settings here are quite conservative at 10 kilobytes per second for both upload and download. That's barely a trickle. Let's bump those up a bit, shall we? For uploads, consider setting it to somewhere between 50 to 100 kilobytes per second, depending on how much bandwidth you want to save. For downloads, you can be a bit more generous. Try setting it between 100 500 kibibytes per second. Remember, these are your slow speeds, so don't go too crazy here. Now, let's look at the schedule for these alternative rate limits. By default, it's set from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening, every day. This might be perfect if you're looking to reduce torrent activity during typical work hours or when your household internet usage is at its peak. Feel free to adjust the schedule to fit your specific needs and routines, if necessary at all. Moving on to the rate limit settings, we've got a few more tweaks to consider. First up is apply rate limit to UTP protocol. I'd recommend enabling this one. It ensures that you have consistent control over both TCP and UTP traffic. This way, you're managing your bandwidth more effectively and preventing UTP traffic from hogging all the resources. Next, we've got apply rate limit to transport overhead. Go ahead and turn this one on too. It makes sure that all the behind the scenes data, like torrent management messages, is also kept in check by your bandwidth settings. This prevents unnecessary use of bandwidth for non-essential traffic, ensuring more of your precious bandwidth is dedicated to actual downloading. Lastly, we have apply rate limit to peers on LAN. Now, this is one you might want to disable. Why? Well, if you're transferring files between devices on your local network, you want those speeds to be as fast as possible. Disabling this allows for unlimited speeds on your local network, optimizing the torrenting process for internal transfers. Now that we've fine-tuned our speed settings, Let's dive into the BitTorrent section. This is where we can really optimize our peer connections and privacy settings. First up, we have the privacy settings. You'll see an option called Enable DHT or Distributed Hash Table. This is like a decentralized phone book for torrents, helping you find more peers. Keep this enabled to boost your peer availability and download speeds. Next, we have Enable Peer Exchange or PX. This feature allows your client to share peer information with others, kind of like networking at a party. Leave this on to discover more peers and give your download speeds a nice boost. Now, enable local peer discovery might sound tempting, but unless you're specifically looking to connect with peers on your local network, it's best to disable this. It can potentially expose your network activity, so let's err on the side of caution here. Moving on to the encryption mode, you'll see it's set to allow encryption by default. This is a good middle ground, allowing both encrypted and unencrypted connections. However, if privacy is a top priority for you, consider changing this to require encryption. Just keep in mind that this might slightly reduce your pool of available peers. There's also an option to enable anonymous mode. This is like putting on a digital mask, hiding your IP address and some metadata. If privacy is crucial for you, go ahead and enable this. Just be aware that it might slightly reduce the number of peers you can connect to. Now, let's talk about queuing. First, we have the maximum active checking torrent setting. By default, it's set to one, meaning QB at torrent checks one torrent at a time for errors or inconsistencies. If you've got a lot of torrents in your queue, consider bumping this up to two or three. This will speed up the checking process, especially if you're constantly adding new torrents. Next, make sure to enable torrent queuing. This feature is like a traffic controller for your torrents, ensuring your internet connection doesn't get overwhelmed. It's particularly useful if you're juggling a large number of torrents, as it prevents too many from downloading or uploading simultaneously. Let's look at the queue settings. Maximum active downloads is set to three by default. If you've got a speedy connection, feel free to increase this to five to 10. This will allow you to download more torrents simultaneously, potentially improving your overall download speed. For maximum active uploads, the default is also three. Unless you're sitting on a gold mine of upload bandwidth, it's best to keep this between three to five. The maximum active torrents setting caps the total number of torrents that can be active at once, regardless of whether they're downloading or uploading. The default is five, but you can increase this if your system and network can handle it. There's also an option to not count slow torrents in these limits. Enable this to allow more torrents to be active if some are crawling along. The default thresholds for what's considered slow are pretty low which is good. It ensures only torrents with very little activity are bypassed. Lastly, let's touch on seeding limits. By default, these are disabled, 
which is fine for most users. If you're not part of a community that requires specific seeding ratios or times, you can leave these as is. This means your torrents will continue seeding after completion until you manually stop them, or you can manage them individually if needed. At the bottom, you'll see an option to automatically add these trackers to new downloads. This is a great feature if you know of some reliable public or private trackers. Adding trusted trackers here can enhance your peer connections and boost your download speeds right from the start. Now that we've optimized the core settings of Qubit Torrent, let's wrap things up by taking a quick look at some of the additional features and sections that you might come across. First up is the RSS section. For most users, this can be left disabled. RSS features are primarily used for automatic torrent downloading from feeds, which isn't something everyone needs. Keeping this disabled helps keep the app running efficiently without any unnecessary background processes. Next, we have the web UI section. Again, for the average user, this can be skipped entirely. The web UI is mainly useful if you need remote access to Qubit Torrent from other devices. If you're not planning on managing your torrents from your phone or another computer, there's no need to configure this part. Now, let's talk about the advanced section. While it might sound important, the truth is, there's nothing crucial here for speed improvements. The settings in this section are more about fine-tuning performance, security, and stability. They don't typically have a major impact on download speed. Remember, the key factors for better speed are usually found in the connection and speed settings that we've already optimized. With all these tweaks in place, it's time to put them to the test. Go ahead and click Apply to save all your changes. Now, fire up a few torrents and see if you notice an improvement in your download speeds. And there you have it, tech enthusiasts. We've optimized Qubit Torrent for peak performance. Remember to experiment with these settings based on your specific setup. If you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button for more tech tips and optimization guides. It supports the channel and keeps you in the loop for future content. Happy downloading and may your torrents be swift. Until next time, keep optimizing and stay tech savvy.